Hey bag ladies and bag dudes. Today I'm going to be talking about metal bag tags, Tula Pink Pinkerville Fabrics, the Sublime Bag Sew Along for week one. The book review will be for Fabric Savvy. I'll be demonstrating how to clean your iron and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, welcome to Social Sunday. I'm so happy that you're here with me tonight. Um, I saw tons of you chatting beforehand on YouTube or Facebook, so um, thanks for doing that and um, chatting with your fellow bag ladies or bag dudes before we get started. Um, I was really super happy to note that the California So Sweetness group has reached 200 members. Mirta emailed me the other day and she said they had some fun things going on in the group and a giveaway to celebrate the 200 members. So I thought that was super awesome. If you're interested in joining your local So Sweetness group over on Facebook, there's a link in the description for you to do that. So there's different groups by state in the United States and there's also groups by country. So you can find your local group and join it if you wish. Um, a lot of the groups have meetups in person and other fun events like the California group just did. So um, a friendly reminder just before we get started, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So. By popular request, um, I know I kind of gave you a sneak peek the other day. Um, I ordered some metal bag tags with my logo and the So Sweetness name on them. Um, so I have more information for you. I'm gonna step over to the side camera to show you the tags uh, close up and I'll have Danny zoom in just so you can see them because they're kind of small tags. So I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so I'm gonna try to hold this so it's not super shiny for the camera. As you can see there, yep, thank you, Danny. As you can see, there's my little graphic for my logo and the So Sweetness um, branding with the font that I normally use. So I got this bag tag made in uh, silver finish and there's the two prongs on the back, which uh, you can use to attach to the front of your bag or the lining, whatever you prefer. You'll just make two slits through your fabric just like you would for a magnetic snap and uh, super easy to install. I'm sure many of you have installed magnetic snaps before. So um, there's more specific details in the description. Normally I just link to um, where you can find the actual product, but I felt like this particular product required a little bit of extra explanation. So there's a link to the website as well as more details um, such as I had to purchase um, 150 of these labels. That was the minimum order from this particular vendor. I'm sure there's others, but this is the one that I decided to go with. Um, so the minimum reflects the fact that they have to make a custom mold for your artwork. Um, and so uh, the creation of the mold costs money as well. So um, I, I ordered 150 of these. Uh, it took about two months to get the order in, um, which sounds like a long time. I guess I didn't realize it would take that long, but. Uh, my contact details as well as the pricing, the size that I got my particular labels. All of those specifics are um, written in the description so if you need to reference those later you can. Um, and I was really happy with these. I feel like they're really nice and high quality. There's other finishes as well if you don't like silver such as rose gold. I'm sure there's uh, uh, regular gold, um, maybe a rainbow metallic, but um, I felt like silver kind of goes with everything and that's kind of the hardware that I normally choose. Um, if, if something doesn't scream to me that it needs to be rainbow or rose gold, I tend, tend to go with the silver. So again, all that information is in the description if you'd like to reference that after the show. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Um, do you currently use tags or labels in your bag? So maybe metal tags, maybe use the generic handmade tags. Um, perhaps you've purchased cloth labels, either with your logo or generic cloth labels. So let me know in the comments if you use any form of tag or labels in your bag. Um, I have another quick announcement. Um, if you're in the Chicagoland area, Quilt Festival is coming to Rosemont, Illinois, um, International Quilt Festival. It's a, a large quilt show, 
open to the public. They have lots of vendors selling fabric, sewing machines, notions, all sorts of fun things. Uh, since we live really close to the convention center, Danny and I decided uh, to um, have reservations at a local restaurant really close to the convention center within walking distance um, this Saturday, which is March 30th at 5 o'clock p.m., which is right when the, the quilt show closes. And so if you'd like to join us for dinner, um, I decided on my favorite Mexican restaurant. It's called Maria's Mexican Restaurant. Um, but if you will be at the quilt show this Saturday, um, again, that's March 30th. Um, if you'd like to join us, I'll be just taking a head count for reservations. So information's in the description, but all you need to do is email me, let me know that you'd like to join us so that I can give the restaurant an accurate reservation. Really excited about it. Um, Danny and I were tentatively planning on going to the quilt show just to look at the quilts and uh, check out all the vendors uh, Thursday morning when the, the kids were in school, um, but that dinner will be uh, Saturday evening. So really looking forward to it, super excited. Um, really excited that an event like that is so close to our house also. It makes it really convenient. Um, all right, so on that note, Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show, we'd like to invite all of the bag ladies and bag dudes to let us know in the comments, either on Facebook or YouTube. So go ahead and type either bag lady or bag dude right now in the comments. Of course, you need to be signed into your Facebook or YouTube account to do that. Uh, we really appreciate the bag making community. Um, everyone's always so supportive over in the Facebook group and on the chats uh, before we get started on Sundays and Tuesdays. And we really appreciate you so much. Uh, we have a lot of fun things in the works for the rest of the year, of course, finishing up book club, um, a free video quilt along uh, that's coming up later in the summer. So really excited about that. Um, and thank you so much for participating and being part of our community. Uh, so new fabric that I've added to my stash this weekend, very eagerly anticipated Tula Pink Pinkerville fabrics. It features a unicorn. I'm super into horses. Unicorns are super, very similar to that. And so I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and show you these Pinkerville fabrics. Okay, so there's three different colorways to Pinkerville. Pink, purple, and green. So the pink colorway is called Cotton Candy. So I'll show you the, the main unicorn print first. I love it. As you can see, it's a large scale print. Unicorn is fairly large on the fabric right there. And then here's some of the coordinating prints. So this is my second favorite print from the line. It's sort of a um, water drop type looking print. It's got the Loch Ness Monster unicorns on it. So this one's really cool. I really, this one's um, sort of like a smaller print on a tan back, uh, not tan, uh, a cream colored background with rainbow colors of swallows. I like this one a lot as well. And there's a couple more. This one has swans sort of forming a heart shape. And this one, Tula is known for in a lot of her fabrics for having sort of a hide and seek type of motif. Like you have to really look at the fabric to see what's going on. So I was talking to my mom about this fabric in the past few days and she said, oh yeah, the, the fabric with the, the butterflies. And I was like, oh, um, you know, those are actually owls. And, um, but I, I suppose they're both, it's both a butterfly and an owl face. So this one's really cool as well. Um, the next colorway is purple, which is called Daydream. And here's that unicorn print. It's got a combination of the purples as well as lots of greens in it as well. Here's that butterfly slash um, owl print. I really love this particular colorway of the swans because I like the teal with the purple. It's really pretty. And these, these colors, I'm not sure if they translate as well on camera as they do in person, but this particular print, um, these colors are really bright, which I, I, which I love. Okay, and then the last colorway is called Frolic and it features green fabrics. My favorite color is green, so I really loved this particular uh, unicorn print. Let's find that unicorn, there we go. So there's the unicorn right there the swans, here's the, the owl and the butterfly, and then the last two. Okay, so again, that's Tula Pink Pinkerville. 
lots of pretty rainbow colored fabrics. Um, so I have another question for you. Let me know in the comments. Uh, what was your favorite colorway out of those uh, three colorways that I showed you? Did you like the pink fabrics, the purples, or the greens? Let me know in the comments what your favorite was. Again, that's pink, purple, or green. It was super close for me. I felt like uh, I, I almost gravitated toward the, the pink colorway. Uh, that's upside down. The pink colorway is my, my first favorite, even though green is my favorite color. Green would have to come in second, and then purple is a close third. But again, all of the fabrics are really gorgeous. I feel like they work really well together, and Tula always designs her fabrics so that you can use all of the colorways together. Of course, there's elements of green in the pink colorway. Same thing with the purple. Um, as you saw with the purple, the unicorns were had like a greenish hue, so all the fabrics are gorgeous and all go well together. Oh, Danny. Oh, there's lots of oh tons of purples, purples. coming through. Very interesting. Multiple pages of purple. Yeah, Danny says there's multiple pages. We have about 20 comments on every page on our screen. Um, and he says there's many pages of comments coming through, lots of purple I see. Wow, very interesting. I guess it's totally subjective. Everyone has their own favorite. Um, so I, I also wanted to remind you that the Sublime Bag Sew Along is underway in the past few days. Uh, week one, your week one assignment if you're participating um, has commenced and I've linked to in the description uh, the album over on Facebook for the week one assignment for the Sublime Bag Sew Along. So everyone is posting their photo of their progress. So week one was attaching their fabric to the interfacing. If you're participating, don't forget to add your photo to the album in the Facebook group. We'll be announcing prizes every week starting this upcoming week and a big prize at the end. So very excited based on the fabric choices that I've seen so far. Very excited to see those finished Sublime bags um, sometime next month. Uh, I think at the end of April is when we'll be seeing some of them start to come in as the finishes. So super excited. Um, I have a very interesting book for the book review for this week. It's called Fabric Savvy and it's basically um, an in-depth look at lots of different types of fabrics that you might use uh, not only for bags but for garments and other projects information that might be helpful to you in regards to using those fabrics so i'm going to jump over to the side camera and show you the book called fabric savvy all right here's that book uh, fabric savvy it's written by sandra betsina and it's a really helpful reference guide so a couple months back, I showed you another reference book called You and Your Sewing Machine. A, I feel like a very useful book for anyone who sews because it discusses um, basics and troubleshooting for any brand of sewing machine. And this is another one of those helpful reference books. So it discusses all the different types of fabrics that you would use for your garment. Um, or other projects. So in this particular book, um, garments are shown as the example, but of course, um, as many of you know, we can use other fabrics for our bags besides just uh, quilting cottons. And so the really awesome thing about this book is first off, um, each fabric is detailed with um, a photographic image of a garment constructed with that fabric. Um, the, the fabric fact explains some um, basic information about like a description of what that fabric is like, what kinds of projects the fabric can be used for, how to feed the fabric through your sewing machine, um, washing instructions such as pre-shrinking if you need to do that with that fabric, how to lay the fabric out. So for example, velveteens have a, a very specific nap or direction that the fabric flows. So detailed there as well. How to mark the fabrics. Um, for example, this particular fabric is marked with Clover Choco Liner, which we use, a lot of us use for bag making. Um, tips on how to cut the fabric out, what kinds of interfacings you can use, what thread is good for this particular fabric, needle, stitch length, presser foot, um, seam finishes, how to press the fabric because some fabrics are very particular in how you need to press them. Top stitching, what types of closures you can use. Um, a closure, an example of a closure would be a button or a buttonhole and how to hem. So very, very interesting. And I bookmarked a few of the pages based on some fabrics that I've used for bag making in the past. So here's the batik right here. Fabric fact, batiks are created by a wax resist and over dyeing process. The base fabric is either 100% cotton or 100% rayon. 
Batiks make great travel fabric since they breathe and the patterns tend to camouflage wrinkles. So really interesting details. I like all of the information, especially the needle, the stitch length and the presser foot, all very helpful. Um, and I'll flip through a few more of these too. So um, cotton lawn, batiste fabric, again, all of the details. And these are all different. So the needle size for each different fabric is potentially different. Canvas, which we've used in a lot of uh, bags as well. Canvas is a fir firmly woven cotton. It is usually heavily sized, but can be softened by pre-shrinking. And again, the pre-shrinking details are in the book as well. Uh, cotton for quilters is what I use um, most of the time. I notice the needle size. I use a different needle size than what's listed here. Um, but I'm assuming that the projects, since they're for garments, you're using uh, the quilting cotton with no interfacing. And for bags, you know, we're always using interfacing for that. Um, the faux leather, an important uh, presser foot to use for that is a Teflon or a roller foot, or also potentially walking foot if you're using it for a bag. Laminated fabrics, again, wonderful examples and very specific details without being an overly long read. So as you can see, lots of other different specific fabrics uh, listed in this book. I, I leafed through the end of the book as well. There were just some basics on working with different types of knits and other things like that. The stain removal guide. I mean, it sounds like such a simple thing, but like all sorts of different things like chewing gum, chocolate, grass, mud. It tells you exactly how to get each of those stains out of your fabric and all of the applications are different. So this is wonderful in and it of itself. Um, so anyway, this is a great reference book, especially if you're working with um, other types of patterns besides only bag patterns. And again, it's called Fabric Savvy. Um, so great book and um, I really enjoyed leafing through it. So. Um, Today I will actually be demonstrating how to clean your iron. So uh, all day today I was busy. I have three irons in my sewing room. I was actually, um, my very first iron was a Rowenta iron and after um, a year and like three days it started leaking. So the warranty was for a year. A few days after the warranty expired it started leaking so I was kind of stuck with it. So I've had this iron all this time. Um, if I needed to, I would use it as a dry iron because of the leakage, but I spent most of t today trying to get it as gunked up with uh, adhesive from interfacing as I could so that I could use it for this demonstration. So I am going to jump over to the side camera and show you my demonstration on how to clean an iron. And I'm actually going to be showing four different products. Um, some of these you might have around the house already. So let me jump over to that side camera and show you how to clean your iron. All right, so here is my iron that I gunked up today. This was pretty much clean this morning, but uh, I took out a few pieces of interfacing. Actually, let me get this started heating up. There we go. <laughs> I, I grabbed a few pieces of interfacing earlier today and pretty much just plonked the iron down on the adhesive just so that I could get it dirty enough to use for this demonstration. So for today's demonstration, I'm actually gonna be showing four different products. So. Um, I'm going to be using uh, Mr. Clean Eraser, Magic Eraser. Next product is the Faultless Iron Cleaner. I'm going to be using this product called Iron Clean and also uh, like a fabric uh, dryer sheet right here. Funny story about the dryer sheet, um, I don't use dryer sheets and we visit my grandma every Sunday. Grandma, um, we call her Alma. Um, so I told Alma, I was like, you know, Alma, I know you don't use uh, dryer sheets, but I figured, I, you know, what the heck, I'll ask you anyway in case you might have some. And she's like, you know what, I don't use them, but I actually have some. So Alma's house is like the magical house. No matter what you need, if you go over to Alma's house and you ask her, she has it. So um, thanks for the, the dryer sheet, Alma. So let me show you, we'll work with the dryer sheet and the iron clean sheets first. So. You want to take just a regular paper towel, lay it on your work surface or, or ironing board. So I'm using my wool mat, which I usually use for ironing. And then I'm going to start with the dryer sheet. And I'm just going to take a small section of my iron. My iron's hot already. And I'm just going to go ahead and sort of slowly rub it on the dryer sheet. You can probably see the brown that's starting to come up on that dryer sheet. 
So I'm just rubbing it on the dryer sheet and then you can also rub it on the paper towel just to clean it off a little bit. As you can see, you can probably see the tip of my iron where I rubbed it is pretty much totally clean. So the adhesive is on the rest of the iron. I was just trying to concentrating on the, concentrate on the tip because I have three more methods to use after this, but the dryer sheet worked pretty good. And again, you wanna make sure your, dryer, your iron is hot and uh, turn the steam off so you don't uh, accidentally burn yourself while you're trying to clean that off. So um, the iron clean sheets are made by Bone Ash. Um, I got a packet with 12 sheets in the package and they seem very similar to the dryer sheets. I'm not sure the rhyme or reason how exactly they differentiate from a dryer sheet, but the application for these Bone Ash um, again, this is Bone Ash Iron Clean, is the same as for the dryer sheet. So again, I'm going to try to grab a different area of my iron and rub it on the sheet. As you can see, that brown gunk is coming off on there as well. Yeah, it's cleaning pretty good. So the instructions for um, this Bone Ash Iron Clean, I'm going to read these because obviously my dryer sheet did not have instructions. Instruction says, heat iron for one minute on a medium or high setting. Lay the iron clean sheet on top of a paper towel on the edge of your ironing board. Wipe base of iron over iron clean sheet on the edge of your ironing board until the residue is removed. And the wipe the base of your iron with clean paper towel. If several months of buildup has occurred, then more than one sheet may be required. So there's the instructions for that iron clean sheet. Let me grab a fresh paper towel. And then we'll talk about the faultless iron cleaner. So this is the only one out of the four methods that's actually a liquid. And for using the faultless iron cleaner, you'll also need, according to the instructions, 100% cotton uh, towel. So I grabbed uh, like a kitchen towel that I have. I did verify that it was 100% cotton. I'm going to read the instructions for the iron clean before we get started. I did read them earlier today, but just so I can give you the instructions off the package. Be sure the iron is hot, preferably cotton setting. Do not use on a cold iron. Empty the water from the steam iron before cleaning and obviously use care in handling the hot iron. So I'm going to squeeze two inches of the hot iron clean onto an old 100% cotton terry towel, which is right here. It says do not use a synthetic cloth. Rub the hot iron uh, over the towel in a circular motion and move to a clean area of the towel and wipe to remove all traces of the hot iron cleaner. So that, that's the instruction, sounds pretty easy. Okay, so that seems about two inches in between those squares. Okay. And there's, this is a pretty good, uh, this is a one ounce packet, one, one ounce packet. This should last you pretty much forever. So I'm just gonna take my hot iron, I'm gonna shoot for the middle of the iron and I'm going to try to rub it. So because there's already tons of adhesive on my iron, I'm having a little trouble with it sticking to the areas of the cloth where the iron cleaner is not. Let's see. It is coming off not as easily as the dryer sheet and the, what was that called, the iron clean cloth. I do see the residue coming off though onto my paper towel. So a funny story about <laughs> cleaning an iron years ago, I'm talking probably eight or nine years, I had tons of gunk on my iron similar to this. Okay, so the, this, iron, this hot iron cleaner is working pretty good. Um, anyway, years ago I Googled how to clean an iron and the top searches that came up in the search box were using a paste made from salt and uh, I think it was baking soda. It was super messy. The paste got all over. The paste got all in all the little holes of the iron. It did the trick for cleaning the iron, of course, but it was a huge mess and my, my iron was very messy after it as well. So definitely would never try that method again. Um, so anyway, the, the faultless hot iron cleaner did the trick. Um, not as easy as the dryer sheet or the, the iron cleaner. Um, the fourth method that I wanted to show you today was the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. You might already have one of these in your house. They're pretty common, at least in the United States. So my friend actually recommended this method to me. She said you needed to get the um, magic eraser wet first. And because especially the magic eraser is wet, when it, once it hits the iron, it's going to get really, really hot. So I made sure to bring uh, sort of like an oven mitt in here so I could hold the magic eraser. She definitely warned me against this uh, to be careful because this gets really hot. 
basically you rub this wet uh, magic eraser against the bottom of the iron. So oh, you should leave it on the table and drag the iron over. Oh, okay, Danny says I should just leave it on the table and drag the iron. That's good, Danny. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to concentrate this on the bottom of the iron since I already hit the other areas of the iron with the other methods. Okay, so let's see. Oh, wow, that did a really good job. Okay, so the magic eraser works really well also. As you can see, all that uh, brown gunk is starting to come off on the eraser. And I'm going to wipe it on the paper towel too. Yeah, that worked really good also. I feel like it's scorching the iron a little bit, but it is getting the gunk off. So, okay, so let me jump over to the front camera. We'll talk about uh, my thoughts on <laughs> that process. Uh, out of the four methods uh, that I just showed you right now, um, I feel like I enjoyed the dryer sheet or the bone ash iron clean sheets the most. Um, I, f I feel like maybe the magic eraser and the faultless iron clean were maybe tied for a second. So definitely these were, th I felt like these were the easiest. I felt like these got the gunk off immediately. Um, as I mentioned with the faultless iron cleaner, my iron was kind of sticking to that um, cotton towel a little bit um, and the areas where that um, faultless iron cleaner was not on the towel. So um, yeah, definitely um, I've linked to in the description where you can find either the bone ash iron clean cloths or if you have some dryer sheets at home, you can just use those for cleaning your iron. So. Um, hope that was helpful to you. Um, if you happen to get any uh, adhesive from your interfacing on your iron, you have some ideas for how to get that clean. So um, I'd like to ask you now if you enjoy our live shows, if you enjoy my bag making and sewing tutorial videos, if you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and hit the share button right now. Share this sewing video with your other sewing friends on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, I hope you will consider subscribing so that you can be notified as soon as we are ready to go live or post a new video to the YouTube channel. And regardless, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, if you could at least humor us and hit the like button, which is the thumbs up icon, um, the likes, uh, shares, and subscribes help us out so much. So thank you so much for doing that. All right. so. Um, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway, but before I do that, I wanted to let you know I'm going to be answering some questions live in just a second. So if you have any bag making questions for me, uh, questions about a sewing notion or tool, go ahead and type your question in the comments right now. I'll be answering as many questions as I can live. Um, so we'll do that in just a second. Um, the winner of last week's giveaway was Charlotte, hope I pronounced this correctly, Charlotte Barube. Uh, over on Facebook. So congratulations to Charlotte. Uh, we have another giveaway at the end of the show, so you'll want to stick around for that. So Danny's going to be putting some questions for me on the screen so I can answer some live. Um, oh, he's got one all queued up for me. Thank you, Danny. Um, are the uh, dryer sheets used new with the product on or used after? Um, Is your dryer sheet new or used? Oh, good question. So that dryer sheet was brand new. Emma pulled it out of, of her box of, uh, she had like dryer sheets on a roll, which I, I didn't realize that they came on a roll. I just assumed they came uh, sheets in a box, but yeah, this was a brand new dryer sheet. Good question. Abby says, friend or foe, is canned compressed air okay to use to clean out debris from inside the sewing machine, or is there a better alternative? I've actually never used compressed air. Danny, do you have any thoughts about that? That's used to clean computer parts. Yeah, I, I figured I'd ask Danny because he cleans his computer parts uh, in between the keyboard with the compressed air. I usually use um, a pipe cleaner. Uh, we tend to have pipe cleaners and other crafty items floating around the house, and so I have a little pipe cleaner that I've snagged, and I just kind of um, make a little loop with it and it, it fits really nicely. Um, I have a side loading bobbin. It fits really nicely through the side door uh, where the bobbin usually goes and I can also fit it um, if I straighten it out in between uh, where the feed dogs go to kind of push some of that lint out. So um, pipe cleaners also helpful for that. Mary says, do you offer a wool ironing mat larger than 17 inches by 17 inches? Uh, we actually currently don't. Um, I found one online last week though. It is, I think it's 54 inches by 24 inches, which I was so excited to find because it fits our whole, uh, my filming area. When I say I'm stepping over to the side camera, uh, that's where that huge mat is. Uh, but I've used smaller mats before and um, they worked fine as well. That, that really long mat was expensive, but I um, feel like it'll do the trick as far as filming. Um, Beth says, I'm making the Clyde Bank tote with, um, I believe, uh, oh gosh, 
I always forget how to pronounce this. Like foil, but foil, foil, but foil. Okay, foil fabric. Should I use SF101 before sewing on the foam interfacing? Definitely. So if you're ever using a garment type fabric for your bag making, like right here, my Sublime bag, I use a ran fabric, definitely interface it with Pellant Shape Flex, also known as SF101 before you start on the project. So what the Shape Flex does is in garment fabrics, it removes the stretch or um, minimizes the drape, which uh, the voil or cotton lawn or ran have drape, um, even though they don't stretch. Um, or knit fabrics can also be used with the SF101. Definitely use that and then attach it to your foam or whatever interfacing you're using for your project. Stacy says, hi Sarah, when making a bag with mixed material, for example, leather and cotton, do I need to chop and change between needle types? So that's a great question. I often do that, um, this bag right here, I mixed cork with the ran or quilting cotton. Uh, I pretty much always use a 9014 needle. So I usually use either a Schmetz Microtex needle or an organ needle. Again, both of those are 9014 needles. If you're using different types of fabric, you may need to change your needle, but I like the 9014 as opposed to a leather needle, especially for leather or cork fabric, because sometimes the leather needle leaves holes that are a little bit too big. So 9014 is generally my go-to. Um, no compressed air for sewing machines. It tends to push the fuzz back in the machine. Oh, great comment. Thank you so much for mentioning that. I had a problem a few years ago with the lint getting pushed uh, um, up into the top corner of my sewing machine, which caused a little bit of a funky stitch. I remember the sewing machine uh, technician I mentioning that. Compressed air in your machine. Oh, okay, so good. Product. Okay, I'm glad everyone's uh, commenting. Jason said that also. Charlie says, I've been told never to blow into my sewing machine. Okay, good to know. I've never tried it, but uh, Connie says uh, sh she also uses pipe cleaners and a small pastry brush. That's a good one too. Very interesting. Okay, so nobody nobody use any compressed air in their sewing machine. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Tons of these comments going through. Okay. So a lot of people do that. Good to know. Uh, Rebecca says um, compressed air is not good to use because it blows the debris deeper into your machine. It's much better to brush it out or use suction. Oh, suction. I didn't. I hadn't thought of that either. Cindy says, what is the best way to get the wrinkles out of soft and stable? So, since soft and stable is a sew-in interfacing and it doesn't have any adhesive on it, um, if you're talking about uh, if you've purchased it from the store and it's been folded and it has wrinkles, all you have to do is iron it. Um, it'll instantly take out any creases or wrinkles in your soft and stable. I know it's happened to me many times, especially when I get toward the end of the bolt and uh, the piece might be a little bit folded or I've uh, cut my fabric and folded it in the sewing room. Just iron your soft and stable and it'll look as good as new. Obviously, if you're using a different brand that is fusible, you don't want to do that, um, but uh, it should kind of perk up after you've fused your fabric to it if you're using a fusible. Doreen says, can I jump into the sew along in the middle weeks? For sure, um, in regards to the Sublime Bag sew along, if you don't have time to join up now, but you do in a week or two, for sure, just jump in and um, post your progress photos for the pre-sew uh, week one, uh, which was attaching fabric to the interfacing or any of the um, following weeks, go ahead and post your photos in the albums. Um, that way everyone can come back at a later date and check out, uh, for instance, what fabrics people are choosing, what their progress looked like. So please do jump in anytime you can if you can't join us just yet. Gretchen says, I wonder if you know how to clean wool mats and can you go over, um, um, share your project, uh, project for the day? Um, I wasn't sure about that last part, but as far as cleaning the wool mats, they can be washed with cold water and hung to dry. Um, you don't want to put them in the washing machine or dryer, but if you feel like um, your wool mats need a little bit of a, a perking up, you can, for instance, put them in the bathtub with cold water and then hang them to dry. Um, have you ever used neoprene? Um, I have not sewn with it, although, although I have some in my sewing stash. Um, I bought it for lunch bags and uh, garments and things like that. Um, so no, uh, to answer your question, I have not ever sewn with it just yet. Good question though. Uh, Renee says, Sarah, uh, Sarah, any update on the Bag Dude pattern and what it might be? So uh, unfortunately, I have an answer for you. You might not like my answer, but <laughs> um, I feel like I need a, I do have a firm idea as far as uh, Bag Dude patterns. So it's gonna be more than one. Um, just because of the things that I've already committed to, my, to myself in my head, like the book club projects and the 
video quilts along and might need to wait till either later in the year or early next year. I know that sounds like a really long way away, but in my mind, uh, my sewing mind that's currently running, I always have great ideas. And so my, my great ideas in my mind have already uh, currently taken up most of this year, but I have great ideas. Danny and I have, and I have talked about some patterns for men that uh, we're really excited about. And so I've got like two or three patterns that I've already uh, decided on for uh, not only the bag dudes, but um, bag ladies to make as gifts or for gender neutral projects. So stay tuned for more information on that. Lillian says, hi, Sarah. I am sewing an Aragon bag, but I'm getting small wrinkles in the bottom of the outside pouch. What am I doing wrong? It's not huge, but you can definitely see the wrinkles. Um, the outside pocket. So I'm not sure if you're talking about the gather pocket. Um, since it is gathered, there's a little bit of extra fabric near the bottom of the bag. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by small wrinkles, but uh, feel free to email me after the show and either uh, give me some pictures or a little bit more of an explanation and I'm totally happy to help. I know you know my email address already since we've talked uh, a few times in the past. Uh, Kimberly says, can you do a demo on how to do a tune-up on the sewing machine? That is a great question. I wanted to have actually let me write myself a note. I did want to have a sewing machine technician on the show. I feel like our studio's so small that it's hard to have uh, guests on the show, but I feel like we overcame that obstacle when we had Tamara on the show for book club a few weeks ago. So I'll try to follow up and circle back to that. But yeah, it would be really cool to have a sewing machine technician give us some tips that we can use for any type of sewing machine. Um, but again, that book, You and Your Sewing Machine, will help for a lot of those details as well in the meantime. Um, Beth says, Danny, how's that UFO coming along? Still a UFO. He's, yeah, it's still a UFO. I think he, um, I feel like I get in this rut also myself sometimes uh, start when starting a new project. I feel like it takes me a really long time, which is uh, the case that I've noticed in the past week to get my fabric and interfacing cut out. So I'm gearing up to work on a new pattern. I got the interfacing cut out. Um, the f I was waiting for the fabric to come in the mail, but while I was waiting, I felt like I lost a little bit of momentum. And so the fabric is still sitting here, not cut. And I'm like, uh, I know it's not gonna take that long to cut the fabric out. It's like two pieces of fabric really, um, but for some reason I'm hemming and hawing about it. So I don't know if that's the case with Danny as well since there's a lot more pieces to cut out for the Park Sling backpack. Um, but I know he's gonna circle back to that as well. Um, Sherry says, any ideas to clean an ironing board cover? So um, I've had dirty ironing board covers in the past which I've thrown in the washing machine every few years or so. I do tend to sew a new cover but I ha my, I've had my current cover for probably five years or so. so um, I'm not exactly sure if there's an easier way, if anyone has a, a better way besides washing and drying your ironing board cover for cleaning it. Let us know in the comments. Danny's going to search for those and maybe he'll put one up on the screen. Uh, Michelle says, do you have a date for the next four pack release? I don't. Uh, I'm working on, uh, I wrote two new patterns for the next four pack and we're also going to place two previously released patterns in that four pack, the Polaris bag and the Sloan travel bag. I. I'm probably not going to announce a date for that until closer to the time just because um, in January uh, for the last pack I got a little um, we got a little bit last minute and it was a little bit of a struggle to get those finished in time so I'm gonna wait till closer uh, to the date when we have a little bit more uh, filmed for the four pack so uh, we're not stressing out so much at the last minute but it will be soon I promise Nancy says, what is Maker Monday? Great question. So Maker Monday, and thanks for the reminder because I feel like I potentially might, might have forgotten that. Um, that's an event we're gonna start over in the Facebook group every Monday. So every Monday I'm gonna post in the Facebook group with a subject line, Maker Monday, and then the rules of the post. So the general rules are every Monday, um, I, I know it's a so sweetness group and we're posting our bag pictures, but every Monday I wanna give you a chance to post your non-bag sewing projects. So um, garments, uh, quilts, uh, home decor items, that kind of stuff can be posted for Maker Monday. So you'll just post your photo in my thread, which uh, a thread just means um, I've made the initial comment. So you'll comment under my comments with your photograph of the project you finished. So for instance, in the last week, if you made a new quilt, you can post the photo of your quilt in my thread and then everyone can admire all of the projects that everyone else is making. So that'll be starting this Monday. I'll post 
uh, first thing when I wake up Monday morning and we'll do that every Monday just so you have a chance uh, without having lots of non-bag uh, separate posts in the group. We'll keep everything condensed in, in my one post for Maker Monday, but we can still enjoy all of the projects. So uh, check for that in the Facebook group this Monday. Sally says, hot, how hot is your iron? My iron just melted the dryer sheet. Uh, that's a good question. It might depend on the type of dryer sheet also. So I noticed when I was working with this dryer sheet, it's a little bit thinner than the iron clean sheet that I got from this packet. I noticed that the sheet in here was a bit thicker. Um, my iron is set at, let's see, the cotton setting. Uh, my iron was at the linen slash cotton setting on my Rowenta, which was the three little dots. Uh, my other iron, which is a Singer iron, also has a cotton setting, but uh, my Singer has more settings. So I think it goes through through number eight for my um, my Singer iron. But uh, yeah, the Rowenta was at the cotton setting. Uh, Deanna says, I'm a sewing machine technician. Uh, Deanna, you don't happen to live in the Chicagoland area, do we you? We do VMIX call. Okay, so maybe we'll do a call in with a technician. That would be awesome. Uh, Deanna, please email me after the show. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com. That's Sarah with no H, and perhaps we could talk about having you on the show. That would be really cool. Um, can you waterproof an embroidered fabric? That is a good question. I have not done it before, so I'm not sure how to answer. Um, I'm just thinking about the different laminated products that I've shown in the past. Um, for instance, the vinyl fuse, the, like the iron on vinyl, um, the OD coat for fabric. I think out of those methods, I think maybe the OD coat might work best or at least for a test, um, that might work best for a tester just because the OD coat is painted on as opposed to the iron on vinyl, it might create bubbles because of the embroidered design being a little bit elevated from the fabric. But um, like I said, I haven't tried that myself. I definitely tested on a, maybe if you have a throwaway embroidered item, something that didn't work out, something you can test it on. Um, maybe I'll try to do that in a future show, but yeah, please do test it first. Cause like I said, I haven't tried that yet myself. Um, Karen says, what is the name of the new book for book club? So for month number two, uh, uh, our book club discussion will be on April 16th, and that book club selection is The Last Runaway, written by Tracy Chevalier. So uh, we'll be discussing that in, I think, three more weeks. Um, really looking forward to it. It was a really great book, and I know a lot of other people in the group enjoyed it already. Marguerite says, I purchased the last four pack but haven't downloaded it yet. Is there an expiration? That's a great question. So any of the patterns and videos that you've purchased in your account will stay in there forever. So First off, you can always find them, whether it's this year, five years from now, and you can also watch them or download them. Oh, so let me be clear about that. The video stream from your account, so you'll be watching them in your account. The patterns you can download. So you can download the patterns as many times as you need to. You can watch the videos in your account as many times as you need to, so 100 times, whatever it is. The nice thing about having the patterns and videos in your account is you can log into your account from any device. So say if you're at home, using your laptop, you can log into your account, watch the videos there. If you're away from home, say if you're at a sewing retreat and have just your cell phone with you, you can access uh, the patterns and videos from your cell phone if you need to. So um, it's a, a great thing that you can access them wherever you are. Beth says, is there a way to add a zipper to the Oslo craft bag? There is, um, unfortunately it's not in the pattern instructions, but I do recall at least one person making a top zip closure in her Oslo bag. It was the zipper was basically centered, so it looked like uh, she t she used the dimensions, perhaps of the bottom panel, maybe divided it by two and added the seam allowance, and then installed the zipper uh, before attaching it to the top of her Oslo bag. So unfortunately, like I said, I don't have the instructions in the pattern for doing that, but it, yes, it can be done, um, and it shouldn't be that hard either. Danny, are you calling it on the questions? All right, Danny's calling it on the questions, so we're going to get over to the giveaway for this week. The giveaway is a big stack of Pinkerville fabric. So let me explain about this fabric. So my dad cuts the, the Pinkerville tulip pink fabrics for the bundles that we saw on our website. Um, of course, as always happens, when you get to the end of the bolt, sometimes you have uh, what we call a short end. So that just means uh, the piece that's left over at the end of the bolt uh, that doesn't equal a yard. But most of these short end pieces, uh, my dad said, were like maybe like an inch shy of a yard. So these are really big pieces got a big stack of Pinkerville here as you can see 
All you have to do to enter the giveaway is to answer my giveaway question in the comments, either on Facebook or YouTube, right, directly in this video. I'll be drawing a winner at the end of the day this Saturday and announcing the winner on next Sunday's show. So all you have to do to enter the giveaway is answer this question in the comments, have you had to clean your iron before? So just let me know, perhaps let me know what you use to clean it. Um, maybe you use one of the materials that I showed in my demonstration, but just go ahead and type that in the comments right now and that winner will be one randomly drawn winner out of all the entries from Facebook or YouTube. So thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I hope you had a great time. I was really excited to, to do that um, clean iron demonstration for you tonight. I hope you have a great week. Happy sewing and bye everybody. See you next week.